Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and in this video we will be recapping Percy Jackson and the Olympians episode 4 of season 1 titled I Plunge to My Death. So this is actually a very grim episode title at that. But in the last episode we saw Percy, Annabeth and Grover start their quest with a little detour at Medusa's gnome shop with Percy actually chopping off the head of Medusa and shipping it off to Olympus. So like always if you're messing with the content please make sure to give a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications and all that. I'm doing a recap of every single episode of Percy Jackson so if you missed the past few episodes make sure to check out the other videos as well on the channel. I recapped all all the past three episodes and now let's recap episode four of Percy Jackson and the Olympians titled I Plunge to My Death. I'm gonna need a sword. So in the start of the episode, we see Percy having another dream, another vision, and this time it's from a memory where his mom tries to teach him how to swim. Percy is scared to swim as his mom tells him that this is going to be really important in the future, alluding to Percy needing to be in sync with water in case he's ever in danger. Percy tells his mom just to breathe as a way to relax and not stress. Afterwards, we see a young Percy in the middle of the desert, which is fitting location as there is no water around. So the person that's obviously trying to communicate with Percy really wants him and a place where he can't run and he can't hide or he can't be safe. I assume this could be Hades telling Percy that she is coming as a reference that the mother of monsters is about to make her presence known very soon. Percy, Annabeth, and Grover are sleeping in a train cart when Percy asks Annabeth about Thalia. Annabeth says that when Luke and Talia found her, Luke was welcoming but Talia made her earn her respect and that she was tough. Annabeth connects this to her mom and how she grew up with Athena, how she was born as a thought and given to her dad as a gift. When her dad met his wife, and had children with her she was kind of the afterthought as his wife did not like Annabeth so much so she ran away. Percy thinks that this is not right that the gods treat their children like this especially to the fact that they are not present in their lives even though they know they may be in danger. Percy, Grover, and Annabeth are chatting about how they would find the underworld in Los Angeles when Percy sees a few pegasi strolling along out the window. Grover says that there used to be herds of them, hundreds of them everywhere, but humans have caused Pan to disappear, leaving the animals and wildlife to fend for themselves. In Greek mythology, Pan is the god of wildlife, nature, pasture lands, and more. Pan eventually ends up dying, being the only known god to die as human civilization and empires expand. But in Percy Jackson, in this Percy Jackson world, it's just no that Pan disappears. According to Annabeth, the bravest satyrs volunteer on quests to search for Pan's whereabouts, but all have failed and no one has returned since, such as Grover's Uncle Ferdinand. A cop approaches their table and asks for their tickets as their cabin has been destroyed. A woman nearby is talking to a cop claiming to be a witness, but we all know that she did it and it's come to be known that she is the mother of monsters, Echidna. In Greek mythology, Echidna is known as the monster who is half woman and half snake. She is the mate of Typhon who is a giant snake and one of the deadliest creatures in Greek mythology. They have many children together including Chimera, Severus, and Hydra and we find out that the baby monster that's in her bag is Chimera. So she ends up coming over to Percy, Annabeth, and Grover's table to threaten to unleash her monster in them and the monster ends up stinging Percy with its stinger. Now because the monster is still young, it can't track sense for long distances because it still wants its mother nearby. Annabeth has a plan to keep them safe by heading to the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri. The Gateway Arch is a monument that signaled the westward expansion of the United States. Annabeth says that it's a tribute to the goddess Athena and it's how people show her affection and worship by visiting the monument and visiting the museum. Grover feels very differently about the arch as the museum also signals how nature and animals were killed and harmed for westward expansion and also a huge reference to how Pan disappeared. Annabeth says that since this is a temple for Athena, they'll be safe and that monsters can't enter. Annabeth and Percy have this subtle joking moment which indicates a friendship building. You know, out of all the drama, it's nice to see decent conversation brewing as, after all, they're still teenagers at the end of the day. But then seconds later, Percy ends up collapsing due to the monster sting as Grover and Annabeth try to heal Percy by using the fountain water. Not sure man-made water hits the same as natural. 
They see Echidna approaching as they try to run back inside the arch. Annabeth hears a whispering noise as Echidna slowly approaches them. The whispering noise was actually Athena letting Annabeth know through Echidna that she is angry and embarrassed that the head of Medusa was sent to Olympus and that the protection that the arch offers from monsters won't be effective. Grover and Annabeth try to get Percy to safety as they venture to the top of the arch. Percy ends up locking Grover and Annabeth out the viewing area on the top of the arch and ends up fighting Chimera with Riptide. Echidna opens a hole on the ground that Percy falls through as Percy hangs on for dear life. Percy falls from the arch but a splash of water at last minute grabs Percy and he ends up below water. I predict that he's probably at the bottom of the Mississippi River that flows right behind the gateway arch. And I really like how they made the Mississippi River underground water thing brown because that river is not clean. While underwater, a Nari tells him to relax and just breathe, just like how Percy told his mom to in the beginning of the show during the flashback when he was a kid. Nereids are sea nymphs and are the 50 daughters of Nerus and Doris. Nerus was the eldest son of Pontus, which is the sea, and Gaia, who was the earth, while Doris was a sea goddess and daughter of the titans Oceanus and Titus. They are minor sea goddesses and matrons of both sailors and fishermen. The Nereids would protect Percy as he was growing up in Montauk alongside his mom and this Nereid tells him that his father has always been there watching over him and that it's been hard for him to stand back because he is forbidden as he broke the pact with Zeus and Hades and has only stood back for his protection. Even though he has stood back, he has been making sure that Percy is protected, venturing to Camp Half-Blood, the, all the rain that was pouring down, making sure Percy was protected from the monsters that was attacking him. We also see Poseidon protecting Percy as he saves his life from falling off of the gateway arch. The Nereid tells Percy to breathe as Percy breathes underwater and the episode closes from there. So that wraps up episode 4 of season 1 of Percy Jackson and the Olympians titled I Plunge to My Death. In this episode, it was a very jam-packed, more action-packed episode. We finally got indication that Poseidon is actually watching over Percy because, you know, the common conception from Percy's point of view was that Poseidon was just never there for him. But we do get indication that Poseidon has been there, but he can't interfere because Percy's forbidden and he broke the pact between Hades and Zeus trying to hide him for his protection um but yeah that wraps up episode four of percy jackson the olympian like always thank you all for tuning in let me know in the comments below what you think of the episode so far what you think of the season so far as well um and yeah that wraps up the episode so thank you all for tuning in make sure to give a like comment subscribe to the channel turn on post notifications if you want any other recaps from all the percy jackson episodes when they drop as well thank you all and i will see y'all in the next one